everyone, welcome to the Purple Tiger Fibers podcast. I'm your host Shay, and this is my little corner of the internet where I share with you all the things that I make. Uh, usually that's a lot of knitting, sometimes it's crocheting, and it's probably gonna be some more sewing in the future as well. I have been getting the sewing bug, and because the spring and summer is just around the corner, I really have my eye on some nice spring and summer garments that I want to make. So. I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna, I got a bunch of finished objects here. Uh, a couple of them are cheating. I revisited a couple of pieces that I have made in the past and a couple of them are fails. So I'm gonna share all of them with you anyway. So I'm gonna start with a little accessory. This is a hair accessory that I made. I am a person of native ancestry and I have been really inspired by some of the native hair pieces that I've seen in the past. And I thought I could probably make that. So I do like to bead also, and so I decided I would make myself a little hair tie with a beautiful beaded medallion on it. And it literally is just attached to a hair tie. I used a piece of denim as my backing, and I am gonna put another smaller piece of denim on the back here to kind of secure it. I did wear it one time, and it's, I think it's a little bit too big for my hair, because <laughs> I have pretty fine and thin hair. So I'm probably gonna make another one in a smaller size, maybe in a different colorway. But that's what I beaded this month. And next I have the first of two fails that I made and didn't like. <laughs> so this is a little vest. I clearly didn't weave in any of the ends or anything. I put it on and decided I didn't really like the fit. Uh, it's just a basic stock in that uh, little crop vest but it's a little bit too high on the neckline. I think I'm gonna bring it down further. And it also, I think needed to be a little bit longer, maybe a little bit of a bigger rib. So that was my first little fail. Can't win them all. And the next one is this one. I had a similar idea. I wanted to make a sweater that I could wear cropped over, uh, over dresses and skirts, but Something about the fit just wasn't right. I like the balloon sleeve that I made uh, and it has a drop shoulder, but when I put it on, it's just a little bit too wide in the neckline, I think, because I did a V-neck and this is repurposed yarn from an acrylic sweater that I had that I wasn't wearing anymore. So this is probably gonna get frogged as well as the gray vest, just so that I can remake them into something I actually like. Uh, this might actually become a vest, I'm not sure. We'll see how well I can do with making a vest that I like. So the next piece, I'm trying to, I have like sewing and knitting here, so I'm trying to organize better. But this is a, another one of those corsets that I have been making. This is my own pattern. I still haven't named it, I probably should. And this is another reworked piece. I had made a crocheted corset top about a year and a half ago and I had made it like just, just a little bit too high on my like under bust area. It didn't hit me on the smallest point of my waist. And so it looked kind of funny when I had it over dresses and stuff. So I wanted to reuse the yarn cause I like the color. Clearly I like the color. I have like three things in this color and I have like two more down there, but I wanted to remake it so that I didn't waste the yarn. So I just made another one of these um, basic corset tops and it is just a two by two rib. And I use, uh, I think this is also the Lion Brand One Pounds. It's 100% acrylic. I had a bunch of it. I know I've said it in a couple of my other podcasts. I had a bunch of it that I had bought in one year and I'm trying to kind of use up all the rest of my acrylic and switch over to just using wool and other natural fibers. So the next piece is a very large piece. I am probably gonna insert photos of this on because it is kind of hard to show on camera. This is a piece I was working on over the last couple of videos you saw me mention. I made it out of the Lion Brand, um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool, and it is the colorway brown natural, I think, or natural brown. Um, this is a full length cardigan with a Southwestern style motif on the back and it has it along the side of the body as well. It's probably really hard to see on camera. I did the, the details in a garter stitch, so it's supposed to be subtle. It's not supposed to be like terribly noticeable. Uh, 
but I really like it. I really wanted something long and cozy. It came out really good. It softened up a lot with just the blocking. So I, I really am excited to do some more stuff with that yarn. I have another couple of skeins that I'm, I cast something on with and then changed my mind. So there's like some yarn spaghetti in my yarn bag over here that I need to address today. But, and then I did make it a belt as well. This, I had cheated and I crocheted the belt instead of knitting it because it takes way less time. Although I probably will rip it back and actually knit it in the future. And then I have two pieces that are sewing pieces and these are both revisits. So I think I mentioned this in maybe my first ever podcast episode, like a long time ago that I had made this skirt out of a linen bed sheet and it didn't come out the way I wanted. And so I kind of gave up and put it in timeout and then I forgot about it. And the other day I was like, you know, I really want some linen skirts for summertime. And I remember that I had this, so I revisited it. It was not fitting quite right in the, um, in the waistband. So this is a self-drafted pattern. I just made it out of rectangles basically. And I added pockets. So there's a couple of other like design elements that make it not rectangles, but I should have, the reason that my waistband wasn't fitting the way I wanted was because I should have angled my pieces when I cut my waistband. So I cut my, I made my waistband as one long, um, one long strip. And I really should have taken the strip, cut it in half, and then angled the edges so that they fit my hips better because I am a bigger on the hips, smaller on the waist kind of a lady. So my pieces often need to be altered anyway. So this is what it looks like. The back is not terribly beautiful. Uh, my zipper, I hand sewed in and it wasn't going up all the way like I wanted it to. And I, I had sewed it all the way up to the top, but it wasn't looking right. So I brought it down and then I added a hook and eye here with like a little like modesty panel. So it's gonna do the job for me. I don't, don't need it to be like super fancy. And I did add pockets. Uh, I will try and insert a photo of me wearing it if I get one. But overall, I think I made it good enough that I am willing to wear it. I wasn't happy enough with it when I first made it that I wanted to wear it. So, but I do like the color and I think it's gonna be good fabric for spring and summertime. So, okay, this next piece is kind of a work in progress still. So this kind of goes with my, my whip. <laughs> this is a skirt that I made uh, maybe 2020. This is inspired by a gunny sack skirt that I had thrifted and then sold. Oh my goodness, it's so hairy. I'm so sorry if you can see hair. I say this in every video. I have a dog and he has lots and lots of hair and no matter what I do, it's on everything. So I just have given up. But this is another tiered skirt. It is a more full skirt and it does have some flaws. So I made it out of what I had for fabric. So it has seams that I don't really, they're not like ideally placed. Uh, what I did was I added long strips of rectangles together to make a longer piece so that I could make lots of gathers. And it, it kind of put them in weird spots, but that's not the part that bugs me. Uh, this skirt actually fits me really, really well. It has, I used an, uh, a vintage zipper, which is like fantastically the same color. And the problem is it hits me at a weird spot on my leg. And it's not flattering in my opinion because I have a shorter, I'm a short person. So I wanted to do something to fix the length. I thought about taking off some of the gather but then I was worried about the proportions being strange from tier to tier. So I thought, what can I do? I had some black uh, regular lace. I thought about putting on the bottom. It would have added the length that I needed, but it kind of made the piece less, uh, less versatile in my closet. So I thought, what can I do? What can I make? So I ended up with this idea. So this is, a bunch of crochet, a long crochet mess currently. And the plan here is to make some crocheted lace to go on the bottom. So I'm using some reclaimed yarn 
which is 100% cotton from a sweater that I took apart. And it's like the perfect color match. I just really like this color apparently. I pick things up in this color all the time. So right now it looks like nothing. I just have some chain here. But what my plan is, is to sew it on the bottom and then add a good amount of lace to the bottom parts and then sew it on. So that's a kind of a work in progress. We'll see how that turns out kind of a situation. And then that leads me into my second whip. I don't know how many whips I got in my bag here. So we're just gonna kind of go with it. My second whip is this piece here, which looks very strange. <laughs> uh, this is an acrylic yarn that I thrifted a long time ago. It is on a cone. It is, I think probably from the seventies. I really like the color. Uh, it's really a good kind of a match for these other color stories here that I've got going on, even the brown. So I wanted to make a kind of loose cropped cardigan. I was really inspired by some of the pieces by um, Christy Dawn and um, Delwyn. I've always really liked their kind of like styling of those pieces. And I wanted to have a sweater kind of like that. So my construction here is a little weird. I had a different piece and then I took it apart and decided I didn't like how it was coming out. I was working it bottom up and I was gonna just do your regular like um, rectangle and then add sleeves to the sides. But it wasn't kind of giving me the amount of oversizedness that I needed in the like shoulder area. And that's my fault, I didn't add on enough stitches. But when I took it apart to start again, I was like, I don't really like this construction right now. So I decided I'm gonna go from sleeve to sleeve. So I'm working the entire thing, one sleeve all the way across to the other sleeve. And I actually like this construction. I've done it a couple of times in the past and I like how it comes out. So this is my sleeve. And then I'm working on my shoulder piece here, which I'm leaving a little bit of room between my arm side and the shoulder piece to give me a little bit more of a slouchy fit in the like shoulder and sleeve area to give me a little bit more ease around my waist as well. So that's what we've got so far. And this is just a off the cuff stock and net with garter stitch stitch. So I am writing down what I'm doing in case I want to actually turn this into a pattern at some point, but it's very basic and I kind of am really enjoying it. And I really wanted to use this yarn. So I'm gonna put this here because I now need to get into the bottom of my bag to give you my last whip, I think. I'm gonna look. <laughs> I may have one more in there. So this is a piece that I am working on. So spring and summer is just around the corner and I am kind of preemptively preparing some of the pieces that I wanna wear. I have been thinking about what I need ahead of time because for me, every year it seems like I don't have the pieces that I want to have in my closet when it gets hot and I don't want to keep doing that. It makes my summer and spring less enjoyable when I have pieces of clothing that I don't feel good in and that make me feel blah. So I'm trying to fix that. So that leads me to this piece which doesn't look like much right now. I am using uh, a, I can't remember, I think it's peaches and cream. Uh, I got it last summer. It is 100% cotton yarn. And I think the colorway was plum. It was literally like $1.50 per little mini skein. And I, I, what I did was I took the mini skein. It has a strand that is four ply and I undid the four ply and turned it into two ply, which is a big pain in the butt. But I wanted to have a little bit of a thinner yarn and it gave me twice the yarn. So I sometimes do that. I sometimes cheat and do that when I can if I have a thicker yarn and I want to make it thinner, but it is a huge pain in the butt to do, so I don't recommend it. And then I paired it with a strand of 100% merino, which I salvaged from an existing sweater. And so this is going to be a cotton and merino blend because I wanted to have something with a little bit more shape than just the cotton lens. And it gave it this kind of very subtle, like variegated look, which I kind of think is pretty. So. Onto what the actual item is, this is going to be a tank top. So my plan is to make a slightly cropped tank top that hits me. I'm going to stop it just a little bit higher than I want it to be. And I am going to be adding some crochet lace to the bottom of this as well. And I might do the same thing in that red color to make a matching crop 
um, tank top to go with this red skirt. Because I have a lot of these colors and I really want to have more mission map. Wow mouth. I really want to have more ability to mix and match my pieces because I want to be able to wear the same pieces over and over again throughout the summer. So that's what this is going to be. It really doesn't look like much. I haven't made much progress on it just because it's on smaller needles and I have been sidetracked with making sweaters because it's still cold here. Uh, we are in the end of February and I live in New England where the weather is crazy warm one day and crazy cold the next day. It's not a joke guys. I know you've seen the memes, but it's real life. That's really what it's like here. Like you never know what the weather is going to be this time of year in New England. So then I have one more whip. Uh, I'm looking at my pieces here and this is, you can't even really call this a whip. This is more like a, I cast on a little sample because I have an idea. So I will explain it real quick. This is literally like the tiniest little sample. Uh, I am using a hundred percent cashmere that I stole from an old sweater. Um, I do that a lot. I try to use existing sweaters. It, uh, if they have like a hole in them or something like that, I can reuse the yarn and it's a great way to get more expensive yarns for basically nothing. So I like that. Uh, so this, I wanted to make, I want to make a really, really loose uh, peasant top to go underneath my like corset style pieces. I want something off the shoulder with maybe a little bit of a puff. And I was trying to figure out how to do that in a gauge of yarn that's gonna give it integrity, but still be um, almost, almost see-through, like that sheer kind of mohair look. And I don't have any mohair, so I was thinking, I wonder if I could use the uh, cashmere. So we'll see, I think I got this on six, US size six needles and it's a little too holy. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go down maybe to a four and see how open that looks and see what I can do with that. So that's a really like a really, really work in progress. It clearly like doesn't have anything going on. So, and I don't have any acquisitions this week, I don't think. Oh, and I didn't talk to you about what I'm wearing, which was in last week's video. I'm so sorry, I just realized. Uh, this is my finished object from last week. It is a Hobbit inspired vest. I made two of them. I have one behind me on the mannequin here. And it's, it's pretty much like what you see is what you get. It has seed stitch and then the back has a rib detail and it's made like a vest. You can completely unbutton it and then wear it open as well, which I probably will style it like that in the future. I've been thinking about doing a video where I style some of my knits. And uh, yeah, so that is everything. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video, but that's okay. So if you made it to the end, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, that's awesome. You could leave a little yarn emoji, maybe leave a little comment about what you're working on. I'd love to know. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.